was the two Gucci gang leaders that held the biggest reputation in the city. Colin Joyce and Lee Amos were known within the gang world as the Mr. Biggs. Joyce and Amos were very, very dangerous people. The most violent, the most deadly gangs are the ones that, on the smallest little whim, they'll go over the top. And that's how they become feared, dangerous, respected. The grip that they had on that area for a number of years, um, you can't underestimate it. It was big fish, man. And they were targeted relentlessly by the police, undercover surveillance operations and stuff like that. Gang members always have nicknames, and Colin Joyce was known as Piggy and Liamos Cabo. Piggy and Cabo. Leaders, man, respected leaders of the Gooch. Fear and respected leaders of the Gooch. What was he like as a person? Could you get on with him? I got on, I got on all right with Colin. Uh, I think I did anyway. Colin was not daft by any stretch of the imagination. He had a reputation for being a very good drug dealer. He had a reputation for being ruthless. He was good at what he did. He liked to control people. He was a manipulator. I think he manipulated the authorities as well. They basically um, ran their own gang, ran the drugs and ran the guns. <coughs> he was strapped, um, locked and loaded and wouldn't think twice about pulling the trigger. In fact, they were so dangerous that police in the city stepped up their operation to bring them down. Greater Manchester Police did form a uh, group of officers uh, called Excalibur, who were basically um, deployed onto the streets to get to know these gang leaders and gang members and to get information and to try and keep one step ahead of what was going on. During the late uh, 1990s, they investigated three murders where the people of interest, the suspects, if you will, were Colin Joyce and, and Lee Amos. They were never convicted. Um, they weren't even arrested in relation to them, but intelligence would suggest that they were responsible for it. When they'd gone to prison in, 2000, in 2000, beginning of 2000 for possession of firearms, which included a Scorpion machine pistol, um, there was a bit of a lull in, in, in gang activity. Police had managed to lock up the two leaders for possessing guns. Joyce and Amos were off the streets and gang life quietened, but it didn't disappear. Lee Amos' brother, God bless him, may rest in peace, Stephen Amos, was shot dead outside Bex's bar in Ashton on the line, probably 150 yards from where I was running the door. Um, he was shot dead. Lee came out in 2005, got prison licence, um, but absconded from that prison licence and went on the run. George came out in 2007. Prior to him coming out, there was a buzz on the street. You could tell gang members were getting excited about this man coming out. Everybody knew Amos was on the run, uh, and other gang members were jostling for position. All of them wanted to be near him, all of them wanted to be his right-hand man. And none of them were going to be, because Lee would always be his right-hand man. And the day he came out, he went to a bail hostel uh, in the north part of the city, uh, and I went and met him at the bail hostel that night. He portrayed the fact that he was he was out of the gang scene now, that he, was, he wanted to go straight. George did exactly what he was expected to do, and he played the game, which resulted in the... Relaxing of a, of, a, of a silent time at, at, at 7 o'clock in the evening. With Joyce showing good behaviour, the terms of his release were relaxed and he didn't need to be at his bail hostel until 9pm. <laughs> 